Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you all for today's lecture and we, before we proceed for the remaining part of the uh, uh, topics, we would like to uh, recap of the last lecture in brief as I have shown it here that what we uh, learned in the last class was uh, the use of polymethyl hydrosiline, uh, this is the structure and we studied its uh, reactivity in the reductions of uh, carbonyl compounds in the presence of uh, tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride. Then uh, we also um, uh, looked at the reactivity of Stryker's reagent which is uh, what it is and uh, it permits as uh, you will remember uh, one four reduction of enones. Uh, because that is a very important reaction. And uh, in this connection uh, we also saw the effect of um, uh, silicon based uh, reducing agents uh, both uh, this uh, triethyl silane and also polymethyl hydrosilane. Then we uh, also looked at the silicon based uh, radical reactions in that context we uh, saw both uh, reductions. Uh, using silane uh, based uh, uh, reagents and also CC bond formations uh, using a radical based uh, chemistry. In that context uh, we introduced uh, this tris trimethyl silane uh, which is a sterically hindered uh, hydrogen containing uh, silane and also tetraphenyl disilane which is uh, also a very nice reducing agent and also it allows CC bond formation to take place. Now we looked at uh, the uh, reduction of uh, halides uh, like Rx where X can be uh, especially bromine and uh, iodine and then in the presence of benzoyl peroxide it gives the corresponding uh, Rh basically replacing X I R bond by H R bond. What happens is that the benzoyl peroxide as I discussed last time upon heating or photolytic conditions uh, decomposes eventually to phenyl radical by the loss of carbon dioxide. That phenyl radical then picks up the hydrogen from here generating this uh, TTM radical. This TTM radical then reacts with the R X to form uh, R dot which is what is important and then TTMX which looks like this that means the silicon X bond is formed and uh, generate this uh, R dot. This R dot then reacts with uh, TTMS that is uh, tri, uh, tris trimethyl silane which provides hydrogen and it forms the RH which is the reduced product and of course we recover the TTM radical. So this is how the chain continues and uh, we have the reduction of Rx to Rh. Then we also looked at uh, barton mccombe reaction or it is also known as Barton deoxygenation reaction in which uh, we can convert uh, a hydroxy compound to the corresponding hydrocarbon. Particularly it is very useful for the conversion of a tertiary hydroxy compound to the corresponding hydrocarbon. That means the carbon hydroxy uh, bond is replaced by the carbon hydrogen bond uh, going via the corresponding thiocarbonyl compound of this kind here uh, where R1 is S-methyl, O-phenyl etc. We made use of that in, in the conversion of a sugar derived uh, thiocarbonyl compound like this to the corresponding uh, deoxygenated product of this type here but here we use tetraphenyl disilane uh, as a reagent in place of the tributyltin hydride. However, wherever we use uh, uh, tributyltin hydride as a reagent one of the main disadvantages 
is that we have to use excess of triabodiltin hydride which is toxic, expensive and, and very difficult to remove from the reaction mixture. It is in that context uh, I also mention another alternative uh, usage of uh, catalytic amount of uh, triabutyltin oxide that is 7.5 percent as a radical source in the presence of uh, polymethyl hydrosiloxane as the hydrogen source. So what I mentioned last time was that we can take a hydroxy compound like this which can be converted to the corresponding thionocarbonate derivative by using this reagent phenyl chlorothionoformate in the presence of pyridine and then of course we use catalytic amount of uh, tributyltin oxide in the presence of PMHS and AIBN of course uh, and N-butanol as a one of the very important solvents in toluene and refluxing condition that allows the deoxygenation to take place to form this particular product. Of course the side products uh, turn out to be carbonyl sulfide which goes away and this tri uh, butyl tin phenoxy compound. Uh, basically what happens in these reactions is the tributyl tin oxide reacts with PMHS to form the tributyl tin hydride which then of course uh, in the presence of AIBN forms a tributyl tin radical and that leads to the formation of uh, the deoxygenated product from this uh, thionocarbonate derivative. And uh, the uh, side product which has come out from the uh, tin based uh, uh, reagent and that is uh, phenoxy tributyl tin derivative then that reacts with PMHS uh, to regenerate the tributyl tin hydride. So and of course there will be some silane derivative. So this is how the catalytic amount of tributyl tin oxide is utilized uh, to uh, kind of carry out the reaction for the deoxygenation of alcohols to the corresponding uh, hydrocarbons uh, under these conditions. Now likewise uh, uh, halides also react with uh, tributyltin hydride and AIBN to generate radicals and get involved either in reductions or CC bond formations. Now this chain process could uh, lead to the polymer formation. Since we are discussing about the uh, radical base reactions uh, and reductions at the same time it is uh, uh, possible that we can look at the uh, CC bond formation using the radical base chemistry. So what is happening is that uh, in, in these cases uh, if you have an Rx here and uh, you react it with tributyltin hydride uh, in the presence of uh, radical initiator like uh, AIBN as we discussed last time it would form a uh, this particular radical uh, which is what we, we call it as initiator dot that interacts with the tributyl tin hydride and it forms uh, uh, INH which is what is uh, uh, this particular molecule or radical interacts with the hydrogen and forms this and releases the tributyl tin radical which interacts with the Rx to be reduced and then R dot is formed and tributyl tin X is released. And uh, uh, then this radical interacts with the tributyltin hydride to go to the reduced product. Now this is something that we had also seen uh, similar to uh, silicon based reactions. Now what can happen is this particular R dot can react with an olefin of this type where uh, there is a double bond between A and B and when this radical attacks onto this you can generate a another radical here like after the CC bond formed which then uh, can uh, abstract a hydrogen radical and release this particular molecule which is what is a CC bond formed molecule. On the other hand uh, if this radical um, interacts with the double bond and there is no uh, tributyltin hydride to uh, stop the reaction uh, then we can expect a polymer formation of this kind because this radical which is formed R A B dot that again reacts with the next molecule to form 
आर ए बी ए बी डॉट दैट कंटिन्यूज फर्दर टू फॉर्म अ पॉलीमर सो सच पॉलीमराइजेशन आर नोन इन रेडिकल बेस्ड केमिस्ट्री फॉर एग्जाम्पल पॉलीएथलीन और मेनी सच कैंड ऑफ मॉलिक्यूल्स आर फॉर्म बेसिकली बाय सच रिएक्शंस बट देन फ्रॉम द ऑर्गेनिक सिंथेसिस पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू वी ऑल्सो नीड टू हैव बोथ द ऑल्टरनेटिव दैट इज एदर वी रिड्यूस द आर एक्स टू आर एच और वी हैव द स्टॉपिंग ऑफ द रिएक्शन एट दिस स्टेज वन वन सी सी बॉन्ड इज फॉर्म इफ वी हैव एक्सेस ऑफ हाइड्रोजन सोर्स then the polymer formation uh, could be minimized as you can uh, understand that if we have uh, say uh, uh, r a and b dot form in order for this uh, reaction to get arrested we need to have tributyl tin hydride uh, in an sufficient quantity so that that reacts to form the corresponding terminated product after one cc bond is formed what has been uh, done is uh, that a large number of studies have been carried out uh, for these kinds of reactions and it is found that the reaction depends on uh, steric factors and also the nature of the substituent z on the olefin what is found that uh, if one takes uh, an olefin of uh, this kind where there is one z substituent and if z happens to be an electron withdrawing group then uh, the formation of the first cc bond could be arrested see what is found is that if z is h the rate is uh, if it is considered as 1 then if you take uh, ester as z an electron withdrawing group the rate turns out to be 450 and if uh, some more electron withdrawing group like aldehyde then the rate is 2300 so basically what it means that the reaction uh, can be arrested at the first cc bond formation and reaction uh, could be quenched by tributyl tin hydride if we have electron withdrawing group attached to the double bond so if we take a catalytic cycle then we have um, this r dot which is formed uh, Uh, from this rx and uh, and if this r dot uh, reacts with the olefin then we generate another radical here which in is uh, situated uh, alpha to the z group next to the z group and if that has a uh, rate k1 and then the k2 is the one in which the tributyl tin hydride interacts and it um, releases the uh, end product Uh, like this where hydrogen is uh, attached to the carbon where there was an radical alpha to the z group and of course then you release tributyl tin radical and then that reaction continues so in this respect uh, what has been found that if k1 which is shown again here if k1 is not fast enough uh, then uh, if uh, this particular rate is not fast enough then r dot uh, obviously will abstract the hydrogen from tributyl tin hydride and the reaction will end uh, in the reduction uh, and the it, this is the product that is going to form but if k2 is uh, not fast relative to successive addition so if um, uh, if this particular rate here is not fast enough then what will happen is this radical will not uh, get quenched but it will then react further and then oligomer or the polymer will form so uh, what is important is that this radical uh, should be less reactive towards uh, the original double bond than r dot is towards this that means uh, this particular radical should not react with the next olefin but then that particular rate uh, should be Uh, less than the rate in which uh, the r dot is reacting with the double bond and then this particular one should be more reactive towards the tributyl tin hydride than r dot is towards it very cl clear that this should react faster with tributyl tin hydride 
then R dot reacts with tributyltin hydride. Because if R dot reacts with tributyltin hydride, you will get the RH. But if this reacts with tributyltin hydride, then you would get the, the reduced product that is this here, the uh, reduced after the CC bond formation. So this is how it is done by uh, Z group being an electron withdrawing group. Now exactly why and how the electron withdrawing group uh, allows such a reaction to, to occur. That means to stop the reaction after the first CC bond has formed and then the reaction uh, is arrested. What is found is that uh, alkyl radicals with electron releasing groups behave like nucleophiles and react fast with electron deficient olefins and vice versa. So suppose if you have uh, say R dot which is um, a carbon radical and it behaves more like a nucleophile and that reacts with uh, say you have an electron withdrawing group such as CHO attached to the olefin then uh, this reacts faster and or you have an uh, radical which is um, having electron withdrawing group here or electron deficient radical then it reacts faster with say you have an electron rich olefin that is how uh, it is vice and versa. Alkyl radicals with electron releasing groups behave like nucleophiles and react fast with electron deficient olefins and uh, electron uh, withdrawing groups which they are attached to the radicals they react with uh, electron rich olefins. Now in order to enhance the possibility of uh, CC bond formation and stopping after the first uh, uh, CC bond has formed, uh, what needs to be done is that um, and also at the same time to make sure that uh, the reduction that is Rx does not get reduced to Rh, this could be one competing reaction but what we want is a CC bond formation. So we need to have this particular bond to be formed or as we wrote earlier then you have A and B here. So basically we want to stop the reaction after this radical is formed which then quenched with, uh, with the tributyltin hydride to form this. So the competition is between this and this formation for that the, you have to decrease the concentration of uh, tributyltin hydride that means the concentration decrease in means the in the in the solution of the reaction you increase the dilution. If we increase the dilution that means the concentration of tributyltin hydride uh, has decreased. Now for this there are two pathways uh, one is to add uh, very slowly a dilute solution of tributyltin hydride that means at a particular time the amount of the tributyltin hydride which is present in the reaction uh, should be as less as possible. And this is done uh, using a syringe pump. Uh, it is a kind of device, it is a pump in which uh, you take a very dilute solution um, of the tributyltin hydride and uh, time it out to add a very tiny drop uh, in say, say over a period of uh, 3 minutes or 5 minutes you can you can work it out and add very slowly drop wise over a period of say 2 hours or 3 hours so that in the concentration of the tributyltin hydride at any time is uh, very less. Of course you have to use more than one equivalent of the tributyltin hydride but then it is uh, put it in a solution which is very dilute solution so that uh, the possibility of a reduction is uh, reduced. One can also generate uh, tributyltin hydride in situ uh, by uh, using sodium cyanoborohydride or even sodium borohydride. But sodium cyanoborohydride is a better alternative than sodium borohydride because sodium borohydride does react with the carbonyl group. And uh, along with the sodium cyanoborohydride or sodium borohydride, one can use tributyltin chloride in catalytic amount. So what exactly happens is the catalytic amount of tributyltin chloride reacts with say sodium borohydride or sodium cyanoborohydride to make the corresponding so tributyl tin hydride and uh, this tributyltin hydride then uh, 
under the conditions where we use AIBN as a catalytic amount uh, and of course uh, we either heat or we photolyze the reaction medium and then of course uh, we generate the tributyltin radical. Now this tributyltin radical will then abstract the iodine from here as I have shown in here to generate the cyclohexyl radical and then cyclohexyl radical will add on to the acrylonitrile to form the corresponding CC bond. So uh, basically uh, what is happening is that during the process when we regenerate the tributyltin iodide from the starting material then of course this tributyltin iodide is then reduced with uh, sodium borohydride which is used uh, uh, in, in more than one equivalent uh, as I have shown here is 1.3 equivalents of sodium borohydride. So this is how uh, by using catalytic amount of uh, uh, tin uh, material, tin based uh, starting uh, reagent and of course using excess of uh, uh, reducing agent like sodium borohydride or sodium cyanoborohydride uh, can be uh, made uh, use of uh, particularly to avoid the uh, generation of a large amount of tributyltin hydride or large amount of uh, tin impurities in the reaction mixture which are difficult to remove. Now in addition if we have uh, then 1 and 2 uh, having opposite polarity then it is possible that the reaction will be facile because they complement each other in terms of uh, electronics. Now another example of uh, opposite polarity can be seen that we have uh, a halide in which there are two electron withdrawing groups like esters are attached and we have this electron rich uh, double bond. So it is clear that when tributyltin hydride reacts with this particular uh, chloride uh, you generate uh, uh, this uh, uh, radical here and this radical is uh, having two electron withdrawing groups therefore it is uh, much easier for it to react with uh, electron rich uh, double bond where the radical is generated at this center. So basically uh, what is formed is uh, uh, this type of uh, molecule in which you have a radical which is now next to the oxygen and therefore it is a stabilized radical because of the lone pair of electrons on the on the uh, oxygen here. So this is how uh, the example of opposite polarity can be taken up and as you can see the yield is very good 80 percent. It is also found that uh, uh, the carbon bromine uh, bond of the original starting material RBR and say acrylonitrile they react equally fast with tributyl tin radical. Uh, but then uh, what is found is that Ri uh, reacts 10 to 100 times more uh, than, than the RBR and therefore many a times the uh, possibility of using Ri is explored. However, there is a little problem sometimes some of these iodo compounds are not uh, as stable as, um, as RBR at particularly high temperature during the reaction. So one has to look at the compromise between the two and then carry out the reaction. But the use of uh, dilution avoids the uh, reduction of the radical at the first stage and therefore CC bond formation occurs and then subsequently the, the, the reaction stops. One can look at uh, the uh, radicals reactivity if you have a nucleophilic radical and if you have an electrophilic radical then uh, uh, this uh, one can look at the uh, singly occupied molecular orbital uh, obviously would be of uh, higher energy because um, the radical which is generated uh, if it is having a, an electron uh, donating group then its uh, uh, orbital having a single electron would, would be of a higher energy. And uh, complementarily if the olefin has uh, electron withdrawing group say here 
electron withdrawing group is attached to the olefin then of course uh, it is uh, LUMO uh, would, would be of a lower energy and therefore there is uh, a possibility of interaction of the SOMO that is singly occupied molecular orbital with the uh, LUMO that is lowest uh, unoccupied molecular orbital uh, because the energy gap would be uh, sub, uh, less and therefore the reaction occurs and then the product forms of this type. On the other hand if we have an electrophilic radical then uh, we expect that we use uh, say you have an electron donating group attached to the olefin and if the R dot is uh, having an electron withdrawing group so the singly occupied molecular orbital will be of lower energy and therefore it will go, go down. On the other hand the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital uh, will be of higher energy. Uh, on the other hand uh, the HOMO the highest occupied molecular orbital uh, would be of a also higher energy but then uh, the SOMO of uh, the ele electrophilic radical and the uh, HOMO of the olefin would uh, be easy to interact with the energy will be less and therefore one generates the corresponding radical with, uh, with this kind of arrangement like this. And therefore uh, these are the uh, important frontier orbital uh, interactions of two different types of radicals uh, with two different types of olefins one with electron withdrawing group and the other with electron uh, rich olefin. At the same time uh, we can also look at uh, the uh, a couple of more aspects of it. One is that uh, as we discussed the electron withdrawing groups lowers the energy of LUMO of the olefin and uh, SOMO of the nucleophilic radicals is of higher energy. That is how for example if you take simply the cyclohexyl radical it reacts 8500 times faster than the same radical reacting with an ordinary olefin having no electron withdrawing group. Tertiary radical uh, which is electron rich reacts faster with acrylonitrile than the corresponding say for example you have a secondary radical or a primary radical uh, with in comparison to that this tertiary radical reacts faster obviously because of electron uh, releasing nature of the substituents on the tertiary radical. Uh, on the similarly electrophilic radicals will have low uh, energy of the singly occupied molecular orbital and therefore SOMO HOMO interactions are dominant. Finally uh, in this regard uh, we have uh, one example in which if we take a molecule like this where there are two uh, hydrogens which are likely to be uh, abstracted by different radicals. So if we take compare chlorine radical versus say methyl radical, methyl radical has high energy SOMO um, and so it attacks the hydrogen bond with low energy LUMO that is LUMO the which is alpha to the carbonyl group. So you have this is the alpha position and this is the beta position. So this particular hydrogen uh, uh, CH bond will be of uh, low energy LUMO and therefore the methyl radical reacts there. On the other hand uh, Cl dot will have low energy SOMO and so it attacks the CH bond with highest energy of HOMO which is what is this particular CH bond which is away from the carboxylic acid. So even such kind of uh, abst abstraction of hydrogens uh, are also affected by the similar type of uh, reactivity as we discuss with the uh, nucleophilic and electrophilic radicals reacting with uh, double bonds having either electron withdrawing or electron donating group. So we will uh, stop it at this stage and then uh, we will uh, carry on the discussion in the next class uh, on some other aspects of uh, uh, reactivity of the molecules using radical chemistry or other reactions. So we stop it here. and. Uh, you try to study whatever I have told today and till then goodbye and thank you.